Nina Curley from WAMDA here reporting from the Amman Tech Tuesdays uh, one, second year anniversary event. Here with Faraz Nasser of iConnect Tech. Faraz, how are you? I'm very well, how are you? Good. So, um, you were just telling me about the, uh, you've just come over, you've just moved back to Palestine and you're looking at the tech scene in Palestine and coming to Amman Tech Tuesdays to have a taste of what's going on in Jordan. Tell me about the dominant trends in the tech scene in Palestine today. What are you seeing? Uh, I think for the past few years there's been a lot of focus on outsourcing. And I can still see that uh, trend continue. There are a few startups uh, in the social media and mobile app, app sort of area. And they're still very new. Still, we haven't really seen a lot of, you know, a lot of companies come out of there. But the, again, the, the focus is still mainly on outsourcing to, to providers. Uh, preferably in the U.S., Europe, or Israel. How does that affect um, the kinds of businesses that entrepreneurs want to build or the ideas that they come up with? Uh, in terms of outsourcing, I think it sort of limits what, what we can do. It's, it's great to have outsourcing. It's, you know, it's good to, to have income to, to work with you know, companies outside Palestine. But I think it still limits what, you know, what, what we can do. I think it's uh, our... At the end of the day, when we finish our project, uh, the source code, the application, everything is owned by the customer, not by the Palestinian company. So that's where I sort of see a, I see a problem there that we are working, we're developing, we're getting know-how, but at the end of the day, we don't have a product to sell over and over or to, to expand or, or build on. And what are the markets that you look to learn from? I think the Jordanian markets... Uh, I think it's one which you know is comparable to ours in, in many ways, and culturally, in terms of language, religion, uh, and you know geographic proximity. Uh, I think it's one where we could definitely learn from. I think there's a in the past few years sort of an ex a really big explosion of you know startups, entrepreneurship, uh, companies uh, working in Jordan, especially Amman. I think it's a great place for for Palestinian companies to come. Uh, to learn, you know, what, what experiences they had, what worked for them, what didn't, and, you know, how they can make similar experiences work in Palestine. Um, is that what brings you to Amman Tech Tuesdays? That, that, is, that is the main reason I'm here. I'm here more on a personal level. The company I work for works in outsourcing, but I am here uh, because I, I want to see what we can do in Palestine. There are a lot of companies here, you know, with simple ideas, properly executed, and... I think that's all you need. You need. I want to see, you know, what ideas there are. You know, lots of these ideas are, you know, you can transfer transfer them to Palestine, um, and, and that is the, the reason I'm here in Amman today, just to see what what ideas there are, what works for them. Uh, I was talking to uh, uh, Mr. Jiris a little while ago, just you know, talking about even Amman Tech Tuesdays. You know, can we do something similar like this in in Palestine? The main, the main idea is get people together, uh, let them brainstorm together, let them you know network, know each other, complement each other's skills, and you know and, and produce. And that's what one of the things I'm also trying to. I, I'm, I'm hoping I can uh, you know bring back to Palestine. I know a lot of people are interested in having events similar to my Tech Tuesdays in, in in Palestine. So that's definitely one of the goals of my visits here. Perhaps a Ramallah Tech Tuesday. Um, do you think there are any pitfalls of focusing exclusively on tech, or would you would you want to focus on tech? Would you want to incorporate other sectors? I I think tech is is very promising for us, especially given our uh, you know our sort of uh, unique circumstances in terms of uh, exporting borders security. I think ex technology is a perfect uh, fit for us. You don't need, uh, you know, special permits. You don't need physical goods to be transferred transferred from, you know, from one place to another. You can do it all over the internet. So I think technologies, especially in terms of uh, software and, you know, social media, social networking, and uh, mobile apps is, is, is great for, you know, Palestinian companies to expand. It's, it's cheap in terms of the resources needed. You don't need a lot of, you know, equipment and infrastructure. You need a, you know, a laptop. Uh, decent infrastructure in terms of internet connect connectivity 
and uh, you know a good bra a good brain and you know good good uh, knowledge and skills to to develop something. So I think uh, tech is definitely a, a big a big area that we should focus on. There are other areas as well, uh, like agriculture, maybe in Palestine. But if if I were to you know advise on where we should go, I think tech is definitely the area. I see. And what inspired you to come back to the region? You said you spent a long time in the U.S. Tell me about that. I, yeah, I spent a lot of time in the U.S. Uh, I spent the last, past five years in Canada. Uh, for me, there's always, you know, I, I, there's, I always feel there's more I can do here. I think Canada is a great place to live. Uh, but I still miss it. But I think uh, Palestine, there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lack of resources, human resources. We're always looking for that. That's the reason when I came back, I got three job offers pretty much, you know, before I even started looking for a job. Uh, I think we need more resources. We need more human resources, people with experience, people with, you know, who've been in the market, been in the industry. We need people. I don't want to say like me, but people who, you know, who have experience to come back and and, and build something. That's that, that's the reason I'm back in Palestine, is to try to help build something, both as a. In a sort of technology sort of way, but also in uh, an ecosystem sort of way as well. Just, you know, what what I was involved in in Canada in terms of networking, communication skills, all these skills that I, I learned in Canada, try to bring some of that back, uh, create organizations, create groups that can help build the next generation of, you know, entrepreneurs. Do you aim to inspire more people to come back? I do. I absolutely do. Uh, I, I tell everyone I've, you know, I had a steady job in Canada. We had a great life. Uh, Palestine isn't the easiest place to live in, but it's definitely it's fulfilling to when you when you've accomplished even a small, you know, have a small accomplishment. It's a you get a very satisfying feeling. Uh, you know, we're doing something good for Palestinians. We're doing something good for the region. There's a lot of unemployment still in Palestine. You know, we're helping. The economy, we're helping people by creating jobs, by starting companies. Uh, I, like I said in the beginning, there's, there's a huge potential. There are a lo there are a lot of resources, a lot of there's a lot of brain power in Palestine, but it needs to sort of be focused on on you know on, on where it can be most productive. Well, we'll look forward to hearing about it if you launch Ramallah Tech Tuesday. Keep us posted. We'll, we'll definitely invite you uh, the moment it, it gets launched. Sounds great. Thanks so much for chatting with Wamda. My pleasure. Thank you very much.